All right, what's up, Math 8? Um, today we are working on slope. Okay, so this is 3.2, um, right off the back of rate of change. Um, this is slope. Now, slope and rate of change are extremely similar. Um, and really, the reason is, is that um, when you do rate of change, so you did um, in 3.1, if I just pull it up really quick, um, when you do rate of change, you do, um, you're looking at, when you looked at the table, how you have plus 2, so positive 2, and then you put it over that positive 1. And so your rate of change was 2, um, or 2 songs per minute on that example. Okay, um, so that's what rate of change is. Slope is extremely similar, right, because that one was um, 2 over 1, where 2 is the y and one was the x, okay? Slope is extremely similar um, because as we have written um, right here for a definition of slope, which you should write down, um, it's the ratio of the rise or vertical change. All right, um, sorry, I was mid-sentence, I think, um, and I started talking um, to, a t to another teacher. But anyway, so, um, for slope, which I have highlighted there, um, it's the ratio of the rise or the vertical change um, to the run or the horizontal change. Okay, vertical change, remember that is up and down, which would be your y-axis, and then horizontal change would be left and right, which would be your x-axis, right? So, um, this is really just the same thing as your rate of change where we had y over x, okay? Um, slope is just the way that we're always going to describe it. Um, it's also a really nice word because, um, as it says up here at, in the first line, um, the term slope is used to describe the steepness of a straight line. So if you think about if you're going skiing, um, that's always the example I like. Um, the you're, you're going down the slopes, right? So if that's the top of the mountain, um, obviously that's not what mountains quite look like, but if that's our mountain um, and you're going skiing this way, there you are skiing. Check it out. You did it. Good job. You're super happy about it because you're a great skier. Um, you know, this is the slope that you're going down. All right. Um, so yeah, um, slope is a really just good word for this situation. All right, so now that you've seen my incredible artistic talents, um, we'll continue talking about slope. So again, slope is going to equal rise over run, okay? Um, which is the vertical change y over the horizontal change x. All right. Um, <clears throat> And then we'll get into um, a little bit more in depth of that. Okay, so just remember that's not just y and x, that's the change in y and the change in x. All right, so um, this is on page 182. Um, find slope using a graph or a table. Um, and then again, we've got this, um, which is the same thing that I just wrote for you um, up above. Okay, so again, the rise is your vertical change. The run is your horizontal change. All right, so we have this example one. Find the slope of the treadmill. Okay. Um, we have our rise is 10 inches because it's 10 inches up from um, over here where it's at zero or on the ground. Um, and then we also have 48 inches here, which is the total length of the treadmill. Okay, we do rise over run, so 10 over 48. All right, and then we can just simplify it and we'll get five over 24. Okay, so the slope of the treadmill is five over 24 inches. Okay. Um, go ahead and give um, A, the got it problem A, a try. Um, it should be pretty simple, sort of the same idea. Um, but yeah, go ahead and give it a try on your own. All right, um, example two. Um, has us trying out finding the slope when looking at a graph. OK, 
hey, this is another really important thing. Um, but also it's just gonna make it so much easier if you've already graphed your points um, to find the slope, okay? Um, so I think a lot of you are really gonna like this one as opposed to finding the slope um, from something like example one or from um, our equations that we're eventually going to write or even from a table, okay? So um, it says the graph shows the cost of muffins at a bake sale, find the slope of the line, okay? Um, so the main thing you wanna do is you're gonna choose two points on the line, okay? They've got point one right here and point two right here. Um, and then you're gonna find the vertical change and the horizontal change. So it goes up two and it goes right one, okay? Um, and that's going to be your change there. So your slope, we've got our rise over our run, okay? And for this example, our rise equals two because it goes up two. And our run go there is one because we go right one, okay? Now, if we had one where it was like, I don't know, we'll say that, okay? This one would be down two, so negative two, and right one. Um, which is positive one. Just remember left means negative. Okay, so if we went this way for some reason, um, if we started at the bottom one and went up two, and then left one, we're still gonna go up two and left one, which is the same thing as negative two. Okay, um, but we'll get more into that as we go on. Don't worry too much about that. Um, We'll just keep going on this example. So we have our slope for this one equals two over one, which is the same thing as two. All right, and that's really it for example two. Okay, so um, example two with the graph I think is really good for those of you who like um, the modeling aspect where you really have like hands-on um, or visual representations. Um, the three looks a little bit more at the numbers. So if you like looking at the numbers, um, this one might be one that you prefer. Okay, so um, the table shows the number of pages Garrett has left to read after a certain number of minutes. The points lie on a line. Find the slope on the line, or of the line, excuse me. Um, so uh, we're going to choose any two points from the table to find the changes in the X and Y values. Okay, they did one and three um, for X and then the corresponding Y values, um, which is fine. We can go ahead and do that as well. All right, so we'll do one, 12, and then three, nine. Okay, so again, our slope is um, a lot of different things, right? We have, um, sorry, rise over run. We also have our y change over our x change, okay? Um, and that's the one that we're really looking at for this one, okay? So we're looking at our change in y over our change in x. So first we have our change in y. We have 12 going to nine, okay? So you're gonna write down nine minus 12. The reason we do nine minus 12 um, rather than 12 minus nine is because we're looking to see um, where it changed, all right? So you're gonna wanna do, for that reason, the second one first, okay? So we're gonna have nine minus 12 over three minus one, okay? And that's because we gotta do it in the same order, right? So nine went with three and 12 went with one. So we've gotta do those in the same order. You can see that right here, right? 12 goes with one and nine goes with three. Okay, from here we're just going to simplify both the top and the bottom. So 9 minus 12 is negative 3, and on the bottom 3 minus 1 is 2. All right, and that's going to be our rate of change, right? So we have negative 3 over 2, which is the same thing as negative 3 halves or negative 1 and 1 half. Okay, so that's going to be our rate of change or um, our slope. Okay, um, so yeah, that is really it for that example. Um, go ahead and try out both examples B and C. 
I want to see you guys um, just try to work out both of those and see if you can figure out which one you personally prefer to work with. All right. Um, the next thing, this says key concept, and that is 100% true. Okay. So this is very, very important. All right. This is our slope formula. Okay. So the slope M, okay, M is going to be used to define um, slope pretty much all the way through um, the rest of your math career. Okay, so whenever you see M, typically um, the M is going to stand um, for slope. All right, um, so M is the ratio of the difference in the Y coordinates to the corresponding difference in the X coordinates. Okay. Um, this is very important right there. So M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Okay. Um, make sure you have that equation either written down or highlighted, and you've got to make sure you memorize that. Okay. It's extremely, extremely important. All right. Um, one other thing. Um, which I think is really good to know. It does not matter which point you define as um, the first point and the second point, or x1, y1, and x2, y2. Um, it's just important that the coordinates must be used in the same order. Okay, so they must be used in the same order. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory there. Just make sure you write them in the same order there. All right. Um, and then finally, just moving on um, to example four, um, we're going to try to find the slope of the line that passes through the point R and S. Okay, we're going to do it both ways. All right, I want to show them both. All right, so we have M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Again, that is our slope formula. Very important that you know it. Um, hopefully me saying that it's very important like seven times already um, kind of tells you that it is actually really important. Okay. Um, so we just need to pick. Okay, so the first time around, we're going to do it the same way um, that they've done it here for number four. Is we're going to do... Um, these in this order. So we're going to have the point 1, 2, R as X1 and X2, or X1 and Y1. All right, so 1 will be X1, 2 will be Y1. Okay, so there it is. Um, so if we go and set that up, we have M equals um, Y2, which is going to be Y2 is 3. Okay, whoops. That's in the wrong place. Um, so we have 3 minus y1. Math lab, or we in room? And y1 is 2. Okay. So there it is right there. Um, and then that's going to be over um, x2 minus x1. So x2 right there is negative 4. And then... Um, x1 is going to be right here, that positive 1, okay? So now we just need to solve, right? So we have 3 minus 2 is 1 over negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. So we have 1 over negative 5, which is the same as negative 1 fifth, okay? So that tells us that our slope is negative 1 fifth, all right? Now we can also set this up the other way right so given that our points are s at negative 4 3 and r at 1 2 okay we just used x1 and y1 um, for we, we put r as x1 and y1 so this one was x1 and y1 um, and then S was X2 and Y2. What if we flipped it, right? So um, that would be 
y2, okay, so our second y value, which would be 2 right here, and then minus um, y1, which would be 3, okay, and then that is over x2, which would be 1, minus y, or x1, uh, yeah, sorry, x1, which would be negative 4, okay? Now again, we're going to simplify, so we have 2 minus 3 is 1, and then 1 minus negative 4 is the same thing as 1 plus positive 4, which would be 5, okay? So once again, we end up with negative 1 fifth, okay? So what that tells us is it doesn't matter if we use or which point we use as the 1 or the 2. So we could do it this way or we could flip it and we could do it this way. Okay, both of those are fine. Um, you just have to make sure that they're consistent. Okay, so whatever, if negative 4 is your um, x1, then 3 better be your y1. Okay. You can't have negative 4 as your x1 if 3 is your y2. All right, so just make sure that they're consistent on which one is which. All right, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to have you guys go ahead and do um, problems D and E. Okay, um, these are a little bit difficult when you're first starting out, um, but um, go ahead and try to get used to them. Um, and then we're going to see um, how we do. And once you've done that, um, that is really it for this video. So I will see you guys in class.